Our blades are sharp. The chilling housewords of the Northern Dynasty ruling over the Dreadfort. But who were the Red Kings of old? How did their bloody rivalry with the Starks unfold? And just who exactly is the Leech Lord? This is the history of House Bolton. The Boltons emerged as Red Kings of the Dreadfort, ruling the eastern lands of the Icy North. To the west lay their fierce rivals, the Stark Kings of Winter, who, unlike the Boltons, were subscribed to Fantasy Haven. And if you want to do the same, go right ahead. We do animated lore, we do live streams, we do video games, and even bonus content on our Patreon. Thanks to this viewer for suggesting the video in the comments, and if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know in the comments as well. Now, let's return to the North. It is said that the Red Kings practiced the cruel art of flaying, stripping a man's skin from the tissue beneath. It is said that the flayed skins of their Stark rivals used to hang from the Dreadfort. It is said that the Boltons wore cloaks fashioned from the skin of their enemies. But many things are said about the past. Who knows what's true? We know the name of three Red Kings. Royce Bolton II captured and burned Winterfell to the ground. 300 years later, Royce IV followed in his ancestors' footsteps. He was known as Royce Redarm for tearing out the entrails of his prisoners with his bare hands. The last king of the Dreadfort was Rogar the Huntsman. He submitted to the Stark Kings around the time of the Andal invasion. Bitter enemies fought together to protect their land from these foreign warriors. King Theon Stark and his Bolton vassals defeated Argo Seven Star at the Battle of the Weeping Water. The Red Kings were now Lords Bannermen. It is said that when they bent the knee to the Starks, they promised to stop their infamous practices. But rumours persist that the Boltons continue to flay their enemies, and display their skins in the bowels of the Dreadfort. Several horrific chronicles written by Sistermen claim that, during the northern invasion of the Three Sisters, one Belthazar Bolton fashioned a pink pavilion from the skin of a hundred natives. Unlike the eternally grateful Mandalays, the Boltons were not the most loyal of vassals. House Bolton and House Greystark of Wolf's Den rose up against their kings, only to be crushed. House Greystark was wiped out, but the Boltons clung onto life. During the reign of the ailing King Edric Snowbeard, House Bolton were one of many factions trying to take advantage and seize control of the realm for themselves. They even rose up against King Harlan Stark, who laid siege to the Dreadfort for two years to starve them into capitulation. Despite all this, House Bolton survived. When the Targaryens conquered Westeros, the Boltons found themselves serving Lords Paramount instead of Kings. We have heard little about the Boltons during the reign of the Targaryens, but we do know of one notable woman, Lady Barber Bolton, who attended Aegon III's Maiden Days Ball, an event designed to find him a wife. Lady Barber did her duty, but also asked the young king to send food and resources to the starving north. A peaceful land, a quiet people. These are the personal words of the Lord who ruled the Dreadfort at the end of the Targaryen era, Roos Bolton. Roos is a cold, enigmatic man, soft of voice and countenance. His desire to apply leeches to himself to suck out the bad blood has earned him the epithet Lord Leech. They certainly haven't sucked out his cruelty. During Robert's rebellion, he argued that Robert Baratheon should slice the throat of the captured Barristan Selmy. And throughout his land, Roos continues to secretly practice the abolished tradition of the First Night, which gave lords the right to sleep with the groom's bride on their wedding day. One day, when the leech lord was hunting across the weeping water, he encountered an old miller and his young wife, who had married without his knowledge or consent. As punishment, he forced himself onto the wife and hanged the miller. The woman later gave birth to a baby boy with pale eyes. She was kicked out of the mill by her late husband's brother and came to the Dreadfort for help. Roos almost whipped her for her impudence, but saw the child's eyes and realised it was his bastard. He gave her possession of the mill, yearly bundles of food and coin, and cut out the tongue of the miller's brother. In return, she was to tell no one of her child's true father, a promise she did not keep. We don't know the identity of Roos's first wife, but she produced no living issue. After she died, he married Lady Bethany of House Riswell, who gave him an heir the quiet, introspective Domeric Bolton, a young lad who loved to read history, play the harp, and ride horses. As a page boy, he lived in Barreton with Bethany's sister, Barbary, serving under House Dustin. And as a squire, he served Lord Horton Redfort in the Vale. When he returned to the north, Domeric discovered he had a bastard half-brother. Against his father's orders, he set out to visit the young Ramsay Snow. Ramsay had been an unruly child. When his mother asked Roos for a servant, he mockingly sent Heek, a foul-smelling creature who was once caught drinking Lady Bethany's perfume in a vain attempt to annihilate his stench. 
Ramsay and Heek, who he called Reek, became inseparable. Whether one corrupted the other, or if both had always been evil, is unknown. But together, they would kidnap, release, and then hunt down peasant girls for their own sick pleasure. If the girls provided a good hunt, Ramsay would name one of his hounds after them. And if they didn't, well, let's leave it there. Shortly after Demeric visited Ramsay, he died from a sickness of the bowels. Or, more likely, poison. At some point, Lady Bethany Bolton died of a fever, and Roose Bolton once more became an heirless widower. Ramsay was invited to the Dreadfort, where he gathered a gang of sadistic friends known as the Bastard's Boys. Luton, Ben Bones the Kennel Master, Grunt the Perverted Mute, Sour Allen the Simpleton, Yellow Dick the Scrofulous, Damon Dance for Me the Whipper, and Skinner. I'm sure you can work out what he does. Which brings us to the main book series. Bruce Bolton answers Rob Stark's call to arms, who grants him command of the second Stark host, including the Northmen Hallis Hornwood, Wireless Manderley, and Donald Locke, and the Freys, Sir Aenys, Sir Jared, and Sir Hostine. He leads his army into the Battle of the Green Fork, distracting Tywin Lannister on Rob's orders. He retreats back to the twins and forges an alliance with House Frey by marrying Fat Walder. Later, Roos devises a cunning plan to capture Harrenhal with the help of the Brave Companions, a sellsword company in Tywin's employ led by Vargo Hoot. Vargo brings captive Northmen into the castle, massacres the Lannister garrison, and lets the rest of Roos's forces into Harrenhal. At some point during the war, House Frey and House Bolton decide to betray the Starks. If you want the details of the Red Wedding's Twisted Genius, you can check out this video. But to summarise, Theon Greyjoy takes Winterfell, Stannis fails to take King's Landing, the Tyrells join the Lannisters, the Karstarks leave Rob's army, and Roose sees an opportunity to restore his house's greatness. Thus, the Leech Lord lets the captured Jaime Lannister continue on to King's Landing, he sends a large chunk of Rob's army to be massacred at Duskendale, and he plots the intricacies of the Red Wedding with Lothar Frey, the steward of the twins. At its climax, Roos personally stabs Rob Stark in the heart. Meanwhile up north, Ramsay Snow kidnaps and marries Lady Danella Hornwood to take control of her late husband's lands, and leaves her to starve to death in a tower. During one of Ramsay and Reek's hunts, Sir Roderick Cassell descends on them with his men. Ramsay switches clothes with Reek and orders him to ride for the Dreadfort. Reek is slain and Ramsay is captured, and everyone believes the Bastard of Bolton to be dead. Theon Greyjoy and his Ironborn capture Winterfell, and the cunning bastard pledges his loyalty to them. He promises to ride to the Dreadfort and return with an army to save Theon from Roderick. Which he does, before sacking Winterfell, burning the Winter Town, and kidnapping its inhabitants. Ramsay tortures Theon Greyjoy at the Dreadfort, breaking him down and transforming him into the Second Reap, a mutilated, servile creature. Following the Red Wedding, Roose Bolton is named Warden of the North, while Ramsay is legitimised and named Lord of Winterfell. To secure their position, the Boltons host a wedding at Winterfell between Ramsay and Arya Stark. Except it's not Arya Stark, but Jane Poole in disguise. It's a whole thing. Despite their newfound power, the Boltons are despised. Roos is a Kingslayer, and Ramsay is an infamous murderer. Winterfell is ensconced in a blizzard, Stannis Baratheon is marching against them, and the loyalty of the lords and ladies within the castle is in question. From kings, to vassals, to wardens of the north. Perhaps in the winds of winter, the House of Bolton will finally meet its end. Or perhaps the Lords of the Dreadfort will, as always, cling on to power like skin clings to flesh. To learn about a truly extinct house, check out this video about the reigns of Castamere. Special thanks to my patron Alex. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed, check out my Patreon for cool content and Discord access, and let me know your thoughts on House Bolton in the comments below.